Welcome to Art Speaks, connecting the creative community with Fulton County residents. I'm Lionel Thomas, Director of Fulton County Arts and Culture. Today, we'll connect you to artists thriving in every generation. Stay with us. We'll be back with more in a moment. Welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Teresa Howard, professional artist and dancer who has committed her 40 plus year career to merging her expertise in mental health with the arts. And she is the Fulton County 2019 Joan P. Garner Outstanding Service to the Arts Award recipient. It is my pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for being with us. Oh, you're so welcome. It's such an honor. We, uh, we just witnessed uh, the completion of a performance at the uh, Aviation Community Cultural yes, Center. Yes. And I have to say, uh, Dr. Howard, you are a force of nature. Oh, thank you so much. Thank so you. for our viewers' uh, sake, uh -huh. um, let's talk a little bit about your background and how okay. you have put mental health with the arts and how you kind of merged them together to come out with this wonderful, amazing mm -hmm. finished product. In my master's degree, I, I took a course called Dance Movement Therapy. Um, prior to that, uh, my bachelor's degree was in dance and theater and education. So I thought I wanted to dance, but by the time I got to my third year of college, I was like, hmm, I better learn something else. What if I hurt myself? What if I have an injury? What if I just don't like this anymore? What if I age out? Because back then I was younger, so right. I felt I'd age out. I don't never hear me say that today, though. Know? And so that's when I went to Bronx State Hospital, it's called State Hospital then, right. and learned about dance movement therapy. Mm -hmm. And then I went for my master's degree in dance movement therapy. So that's where the therapy came in. Immense experience. What an experience. Um, the actual dancing, I have to tell you the story. Can I tell you the story? Please tell us. <laughs> I was a track star. I love wow. track. Uh -huh. And I used to be in meets with women, that young women that eventually ended up being in the, in the Olympics. We used to go to the Harlem Armory in New York and we would run track. So you had aspirations of being in the Olympics? I did, okay. I did. All right. Yes, yes I did. All right. And so in 10th grade, you don't do this to 10th graders, but in 10th grade, um, a Mrs. Warrenoff came. She was a, a new ballet modern dance teacher and they put all the people that were good in PE in her class. Mm -hmm. That disturbed me immensely. So I would wrap my knees up, wrap my ankles up so I could sit out. Oh, I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and so I could sit out. But one day I went to class with my ankles wrapped up and my knees wrapped up. You're not gonna believe this. Right. I walked into my mother. I never did that again. Actually, that moment in time, my mother was very strict, that literally started my career in dance. My mother would take me down to Rockefeller Center, down to Broadway every Saturday, and I would have to take ballet class. I think I thought it was kind of like a punishment. Right. But now I see what she did and why she did what she did. So that took me to uh, Lehman College where I studied dance and um, great people. Um, John Parks, Alvin Ailey, right. uh, Baba Chuck Davis, um, Forces of Nature. I mean, I danced at that time. So you were exposed to all kinds of dance? Yes, all types of dance. Ballet, modern, jazz, tap, Balinese dance. I mean, yeah, right. yeah, African dance. Um, and danced a lot uh, during um, college. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to make a shift just in case, you know, because you know you have to make money around here in order to live. That's right. That's right. So that's when I made the shift and entered the master's program for dance movement therapy. And this was way back. This was 1976 to 78. Okay. Um, so not not long ago. Not right? long ago right. at all. <laughs> <laughs> just a short while. Right. And. Um, from there, I entered into the therapy world, 
you know, working in, mm -hmm. in day treatment programs, substance abuse programs, prevention programs. And I really liked that. I began to infuse movement and dance mm. into the lives of the people, understanding and realizing at that moment in time that, my gosh, this movement stuff is healing. It's a force and it heals and it makes people at least feel, if not immediately feeling better, at least feel. So let, let's fast forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So speaking of teaching, mm -hmm. You also teach at Kennesaw State and Emory University. Yes. So tell us about that experience as well. Oh my goodness. Um, those are young folks. Those are college students, you know, yeah. um, looking to do kind of what I did in a sense. Mm -hmm. So they're majors, they're dance majors. And um, they come to my class, they get credit for my class. Um, I teach in, I'm teaching African dance. Um, my classes are always full. It's, it's sort of a melting pot. I, right. get, I get students that are majors in dance that never took an African dance in their life. I get people that are sports enthusiasts that come to get agility and strength. I get students that are nurses that come to my class for stress relief. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. So you've also created a uh, uh, a senior dance troupe. Yes. And I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna butcher the name, so yes. I'm gonna let you say the name of this senior yes. group. And tell us about how that came to be. Well, the senior group's name is Adele Yegba. We did not have a name initially. This is, we, we were at the HJC Bowden um, Senior Multipurpose Facility. Um, this here, is here in, in Fulton, Fulton County. County. Yes. Um, I was, I opened up the, an adult day program there at the Bowden facility. Um, in 2004, and so 2005, someone from the multi-purpose side came over to Adult Day and said, we understand you dance, and we understand you teach dances, but we need you to teach us a dance. And I'm thinking, well, Fulton County didn't hire me to teach dance, I am here to manage Adult Day. But they came, mm -hmm. so I taught them dance, and then it grew. And it grew and it grew. So in the evenings, I would teach them dances and teach them more dances. So we created a dance group. So one year we were going to um, what used to be the 14th Street Playhouse. Right. And we were doing a performance. We partnered with a lot of dance companies and we partnered with Manga, African Dance. And my group was going up the stairs at the 14th Street Playhouse and Ramatu Sabat looked at them and she said, Oh, they're Adele Yegba. We were like, what's that? So that's, that's how you... That that's how the name came. Okay. She said, oh, they're Adele Yegba. We said, okay, so what is that? You know, we'll take it because we didn't have a name. Right. And um, she said, well, that's from Nigeria, the northern house of people, and Adele Yegba means the elders have gathered with completion. And, and so, so that's, that's really a celebration. It is a big celebration. Speaking of celebrations, so you were recently featured in a short documentary. Yes. I snuck off the slave ship. Yes. And yes. Um, you've had some, some excitement around that. So oh my tell, goodness. tell us about that. Oh my goodness. That came from a phone call from um, a lady online. And in a, in, in a week and a half to two weeks, we were out on, on a set that was created, an old juke joint. Um, in front of in front of Lonnie Holly's very artistic said, residence. Did you say juke joint? I did. Okay. I did. They <laughs> created an old juke joint out of this old old gas station, man. And then there was a blues band in there, and we danced. Then all of a sudden, Lonnie Holly said, "I want y'all to go across the street." There was a vacant lot. We went across the street, and we started to dance. And he started to sing. And the song had to do with, I snuck off the slave ship. And we danced and he sang and the music was, was very powerful, you know? So the movements, the movements ended up, we were creating as we were going along with this. And um, we created a dance right on the spot. And when we do the, and in the film, they come back to the dance like three different times. And it was featured at the Sundance Film Festival. Absolutely. And recently here at the Atlanta yes. Film Festival. Yes. And so a lot of people got to see this. Yes. So Dr. Howard, you've had an amazing 40 plus year career. Yes. 
uh, in both mental health, substance abuse, yes. uh, mm -hmm. as a therapist, as a, a dance teacher and all that. So what's next for you? <laughs> I am open to whatever comes. Whatever comes my way, you know, I grab it and move with it. I'm not really sure. I just, I just go with it. Always go with it. So stay open to possibilities. Absolutely, always, always, and opportunities. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. Thank you very much You're for being so with welcome. us. You're so and, welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you. It's such an honor. We're going to have to take a break. And when we return, we will continue our discussion with artists thriving in every generation. So we're back with piano prodigy William Zhang who's gonna play one of his favorite pieces for our viewers. Thank you very much. Very good. High five on that. I'm here with music prodigy William Zhang, who won first place in the 2019 American Protégé International Piano and String Competition. William, it's a pleasure having you with us today. You are taking the music world by storm. How do you feel about that? Pretty good. Pretty good? So tell the viewers how you got started playing the piano. My mom and dad took me to a business um, while meeting at Georgia Tech. And then while my mom was doing something or doing a meeting, my dad took me to a music studio. There was an upright piano and then he let me sit there and then I put my hands up there like as if I was going to perform any piece I know and then I started to punch some all the keys the black keys and white keys and I also um did some forte and piano so you were about one and a half two years old at that point yeah so right now how old are you uh next month I turn seven so you're going to be a grand old seven years of age <laughs> so how do you feel about getting older? Not too bad and not too good. Oh, what do you mean not too good? <laughs> mm, just need to buy more things and for a walking stick. When you're young, you don't need to spend a lot of money. So tell us more about how you learn to play the piano. Uh, you have an instructor? Yeah. What's your instructor's name? Professor Basseline. And that instructor is at Georgia State, correct? Yeah, university. So, university, that's correct. So how often do you practice? Two to three hours. Do you like playing the piano? Yeah. Yes? Yes, because it brings me the happiness, I, and I want to bring the audience happiness. Also, is because when I play different plays, piece or listen to different piece um they bring me into its own world um i can see the fantasy and the magic and different colors and the plants and animals and sometimes there might be goats like for example a slender man so you like to read as well yeah so what kind of books do you read Wings of Fire, which is about dragons, and Warrior Cats, which is about cats that live in the forest that are wild cats. So does it help you um, to read that and help your creative process as an artist? Because you know you're an artist, correct? Yes. All right. I think that helps a little bit. Okay. How, does, how so? Because... I like to read fiction books because it has a lot of imagination. Then when I play the piano, um, I, I also have different imagination like I read books. 
they have the root book has put you into a story or want you to keep reading it like music it wants you to keep finding um keep um learning the music so you play classical piano so who are some of the classical composers that you uh, music you play i play tchaikovsky which i already dropped uh bach chopin Chopin, a little Beethoven, but not much, only the Ferralis, and then the Mozart, a little Haydn, which I'm learning, and Schubert. Okay, so who's your favorite? Which First which? is Mozart, second is Chopin, third is Bach. Okay, so uh, I understand that you're, you're homeschooled too. So how is that with um, learning to play the piano and also uh, studying uh, your work, uh, your educational work at home? Um, usually um, when we, when my mom and dad just homeschooled me, I think it's very boring because I don't get to go to school to play with the other kids. But now I feel I like homeschool and I don't want to go to school. Because you love your music, correct? Yeah, and I like to homeschool because I can, I'm can. i much more flexible. I can sleep as long as I want. Okay, and that's important. So you can have the energy to, to play the piano and, and be creative and read and your also, books. And um, also, my mom and dad want to homeschool me is because when I come back, um, I'm very tired and then I can have to sleep, and then after that I have, I, I have energy to play piano, but it's already eight or nine, so I have to eat dinner, and then can, I have to very little time to, to practice piano, and I can only go up to sleep and wait for the next day the same thing. So you just recently played at Carnegie Hall in New York. Yes. How was that experience for you? Great, didn't need to worry about anything. Right, you weren't nervous at all. Yep. And there were, th there were hundreds of people out there, thousands of people some watching of, you play. Some of them, um, some of the other musicians, my dad watched them say, it's not that I play too good, it's because they play too poor. Then I won the first wow. place in the Distinction Award scene. So, um, so what do you see as your, your, your future with piano? Maybe I want to be an artist as for uh, maybe draw, maybe play piano, maybe composer, maybe pianist, maybe a writer or engineer. I don't know exactly. Well, you have a lot of time to figure that out. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so um, tell us, um, what's your favorite thing to do other than playing the piano? Um, I like to play my dinosaurs and toys as usual, like other kids. And of course, I still like to play computer games and watch TV. But other than that, the good thing I like to do is I like to read. Right. My mom and dad like what I read, but don't like me to play games or watch television. So the, I, the good thing is I read. And I like to draw, but I haven't drawn for a few days these days, I mean. So you're also a visual artist. I mean, are you any yeah. good at drawing? Mm, yes, but not very good. Okay. Compare, and oh, I also like to swim. Oh. I already, I am, my mom and dad already signed me up for a swim team this summer, and I'm going to do it maybe today. So you like to swim? Yes. So what about swimming do you like? My favorite move in the water is freestyle. I like freestyle much better than the others. Um, I would put butterfly second, freestyle first, and freestyle kick third. So you already know how to swim. And dolphin kick fourth. And so you know how to swim already? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We're gonna have to take a break right now, and when we return, we're going to talk to your parents. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. I'm here with William's parents, 
Julie and Todd. Thank you for being with us. Oh, pleasure is it, ours. It's a pleasure, yeah, to be here. Thank you. So we're gonna get right to it. So Todd, there's an interesting story about uh, how he got started. Uh, you were at a business meeting at Georgia Tech. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we had a uh, business meeting with Georgia Tech on uh, the website. Uh, we're going to help them develop. So my wife joined uh, the business meeting and I took him to the student center, uh, try to find an empty room, uh, take a rest. Uh, it, it just happened to saw a piano uh, sit there and uh, I put him on the chair. Um, I want to see if he like it. He started to punch the key like this and touch black key and white key, go this way and back and look at me. He so enjoy. Mm -hmm. I took a video and then uh, talked to my wife about it. And plus uh, we took him to the kind of music program. We listen a lot of pop music when we're driving. Uh, we listen different music at home. So I think maybe we should buy a piano. Mm -hmm. So when he was two, we purchased a, a brand new piano at home. Then we start look at, uh, you know, where we can find teacher. We we're going to find teacher. Nobody want to teach him. <laughs> oh, okay, because he was so young. Yeah. Right. The teacher said two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some teacher said you can wait when he was seven and, and eight, but his next month is seven. Uh, he already learned us a lot. So how did you find that teacher? We really take time uh, interview about uh, 25, 26 piano teachers. So after we interviewed, uh, he almost four and a half. We find the first uh, piano teacher who really has the passion. Uh, is, a, is, a, is a nice lady uh, playing in the church and uh, we decide uh, to let her to teach him. She bring the passion, bring the love, the mu music to him for about three or four months. Then mm -hmm. we find another concert pianist and a professor in Georgia, in Georgia State University. And, and that person is? Dr. Uh, Rafi Basselin. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and great. he's, he's, he's so, wonderful. So so Julie, how do you um, feel about all of this? Um, how do you support uh, young William's uh, ambition? We, when he was, uh, like Todd said, when he was uh, one, almost two, we just feel music could be a big part of uh, his life. So what we do as a parents, take him to music programs as much as possible and also have music at home as much as possible because we are not professional musicians. We cannot really guide him professionally, but what we can do is provide that environment, that exposure to him. And also I feel um, what's important in his um, music development and overall um, early education development, another very important element is his uh, reading ability. Mm -hmm. We start to uh, guide him to read when he was not even one. I start to read picture book to him and he was pretty interested to look at the pictures, of course, not reading, but mm -hmm. he starts to read pretty early when he was three. He read the whole um, Dr. Seuss book by himself. So he yeah. also likes to swim, I Yeah, hear. he, he loved to swim, and yeah. So you, you, you all got him involved in swimming, and, uh, and so he's gonna be probably an Olympic swimmer too. No, <laughs> no, we are not sure about that. That is really about uh, work out and uh, help with his uh, physical development. So, um, and to wrap this up, do you see yourself um, supporting him as a classical pianist in the future? Um, he a, has a very special gift. Uh, it's not very often that someone this young uh, has this kind of gift and can play some of the greats like Chopin and Bach and, and, and all the great composers. So um, do you see him pursuing this? Is, this? is this something that you think that he would
be pursuing in his career? Yeah, I think for a very long time, he probably will be going, continue going down this path on mm. the music, but he also loved to do other things. He loved to read, he loved to draw, and he loved science. So there are many different other possibilities as well. So and we will- And also love engineer. Yes, so he loved to build. So we will see where he goes. And so the, the, the studies have always shown that, um, you know, young people involved in the arts, um, it helps their, their other de development, uh, their educational pursuits and so forth. So we want to wish you well in your future pursuits. And I want to thank you all for sharing your incredible story with us here on Art Speaks. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us. For more information about the arts in Fulton County and other programs featured in this show, please visit our website for links to arts resources. And remember, you can connect with us online on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us anytime on Vimeo or YouTube. Until next time, live the arts in Fulton County.